Hello, everyone. It's time for Vanish Chicagoland Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode 322, season 13. Today's date is April 9th, 2024, and welcome to the program. On today's show, I'll talk about the Dove Candy Shops uh, in Chicago. Uh, and then I'll talk about the, this is something unusual. Uh, it's called the Keyfax Night Owl um, television program uh, that aired on WFLD TV Channel 32 in Chicago. It aired on midnight every night in the early 1980s. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a weird one. <laughs> so I'll talk about my memories of that. But first, uh, the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Doritos Sour Cream and Onion Chips. <laughs> And uh, this commercial is from 1979, and it features who else but the famous uh, comedian Avery Schreiber. Uh, I'll explain about him after the commercial is played. So sit back and relax, and I'll be right back with the show, folks. Thank you. (laughs) Everything's perfect, Maurice. Mm -mm. If you're fussy about your sour cream and onion dip, you'll really love our latest flavor. Sour cream and onion flavored Doritos brand tortilla chips. So for a snack, with a great taste of sour cream and onion already on the chip, try sour cream and onion Doritos. They taste as good as they crunch. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Doritos sour cream and onion flavored uh, chips. Uh, the commercials from 1979 featured Avery Schreiber. Talk about a little about him. Uh, he was a f- comedian, an actor. Uh, he's from Chicago. Uh, he started in Second City. Uh, he was in in the, he had a a partner. Um, you know, a comedy team, uh, they form a comedy team. His name was Jack Burns. You may remember him as Warren Ferguson from the, the Andy Griffith show. He only there for like a brief time after he replaced Don Knotts. A lot of people didn't like him. You know, the fans did. Yeah, he was okay to me. But, oh, well. Anyway, uh, so after... You know, after Second City, he's famous for those Dorito commercials. Uh, you can find a lot of them on YouTube. Uh, they're they're still funny. I remember watching them on television in the seventies. They're, they're hilarious, like that. Uh, play a lot. He was in a lot of TV shows, uh, movies too. Um, let's see. So uh, the most famous. Uh, TV role was in that bomb, the 1965 TV series, My Mother the Car. <laughs> and he played uh, Count Benzini. He always wanted that car, the one that talked. He wanted that. And a lot of people didn't remember that. Oh, he was in a lot of uh, game shows like Match Game. And uh, appeared, like, for example, uh, the, the, the movies he appeared was like Don't Drink the Water, a last remake of Bo Jest, uh, Concord Airport 79. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Caveman, star Ringo Starr. Jimmy the Kid, that starred uh, Gary Coleman. And also, the last movie I think he did was Robin Hood, Men in Tights. <laughs> he did that. Uh, one of his latest films like that. Um... Other TV shows, uh, Get Smart, Love American Style, That Girl, you name it. <laughs> so, and uh, he passed away on January 7th, 2002. He was 66 years old. Yeah, he had a heart attack. He had health problems. So, that's a shame. He was a funny man. I liked him. I really did. Uh, I might do a podcast episode about him, which would be great, you know, because he's from Chicago. Why not? Okay. At the beginning of the program, I mentioned I'm going to talk about the Dove Candy Shops in Chicago. Also, the Keyfix uh, Night Owl TV service uh, that aired on Channel 32 in Chicago as well. 
Uh, before I get started, I'll mention a couple things. One, uh, remember, uh, remember if you were listening, uh, I talked about the White Castles restaurant that closed on West 79th Street and South Pulaski Road, right across from Bogan High School, where I went. And uh, the responses have been phenomenal. It was just, oh my God, people are still talking about this. And this happened, what, uh, what was it? Uh, Friday. It's Tuesday now. And they just can't believe it's gone. And it is gone. So uh, but I went there Friday, had lunch. It was very surreal. It really was. Uh, nobody was there, really. But I had a few sliders and some fries and a drink. Well, not a few. I had one. <laughs> and people complained about that. Got to watch it. Don't worry, I promise. Next time I go to White Castle, I'll have some more. You know, okay, just for to celebrate. Anyway, uh, that closed around 5 o'clock Sunday morning. Uh, that's what I hear. And they stopped serving food. And then Monday morning, the... Uh, there was this uh, crew, they dismantled the signs and they put a fence around the building. And uh, someone sent me a photo on Instagram. And he drove by and he, and he said, Pete, this is, this is what it looks like now. And I go, oh my God, that's so sad. That really is. Let me explain something. You know, that's not the original building. They, they re, I think they tore it down and then rebuilt it. I think so. I don't know when. I mentioned that before, you know. But you know, people like this like to correct me and all that. Okay, fine. But it's it was still there. It's still look, uh, you know, the memories are still there for most of the people I went to Bogan with, in my class, other classes, people who live in the neighborhood, people who pass by, you know, like that, and so. They are going to build some, something, uh, I don't know if they're going to remodel it, maybe, I'm not sure, uh, to a Mexican restaurant. Uh, according to the aldermen in the neighborhood, the good news is it's not going to be vacant. Like I said, it's going to, there's going to be something there, so that's great. But, you know, times have changed. Uh, when I went to school, we walked around freely. We went out to lunch and everywhere around the neighborhood i mentioned this before but you know uh, as time went on uh, kids were confined in the school either you brought your lunch or you ate at the cafeteria you had no choice you couldn't go out times have changed you know the security so i guess it just dwindled but uh during that time it was like wow every day it was like packed <laughs> So that's a uh, that's a shame. Uh, today they printed an article in the Southwest Herald, a newspaper. That's a Southwest suburban. You know, it comes to the Southwest side and uh, Southwest suburbs. I just uh, received it today. I got the article. I, I read it. It was pretty good. So I might share it on my profile and all that. Anyway, um, so uh, and. There was a photographer there. I think his name was Steve Newhouse. He took pictures of it. And then there was Tim Haddock. He wrote the article. So that was kind of cool. It was very nice. And uh, the memories live on. They really do. Okay. Uh, another brief thing I'm going to talk about, you know, I've been, uh, about my health. I've had a backache for the past few days. I'm a little better, but it's. I think it's the rib. You know, the lesion on the rib. It could be that, or I just... Because I've been lying down all day, maybe I stretch a muscle, but it, I'm not, it doesn't hurt that much. But I've been taking Tylenol, but I gotta t stop it. You know, just uh, just wait for a couple of days, and I'll resume. We'll see how it goes. Oh, hopefully, that back ache will be gone. I'll be much better, and uh, start radiation on next Monday on the fifteenth for five days. That'd be great. And one last thing, we had the eclipse. Uh, I was home. I didn't get the glasses. I went outside. I, I covered my eyes, you know, so I didn't see. I saw a little bit, a little bit. But the funny thing is, when you're in your house, it was dark. It was like, oh, my God, it was like in the middle of the night, <laughs> you know, like two or three. I should have taken a picture. 
show people, oh my God, it was so pitch, it was almost pitch black, you know, but it was light outside in the windows, but it was the weirdest thing. Very weird indeed. Yeah. So we won't get an eclipse for a long, long, long time. I won't, I don't think I'll be alive <laughs> by the time it comes here. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to get started. Uh, I'm going to talk about Dove candies. Uh, oh, these were great. There still are. Uh, I'll give you a brief, I'll give you a history of the Dove candies. Um, they had a store located at West 60th Street in South Pulaski Road in the West Lawn neighborhood on South Side. And the founder of the store, his name was Leo Stephanos. And uh, he started in 1939. Yeah, back then it was like, oh, there was nothing out there. You know, it was like, you know, it was like desolate. It was uh, the area. It wasn't built up like that, but that's great. Uh, oh, let me let me uh, correct that. He found it in 1939, but it wasn't at that store. He, he found it on a street corner. Then, um, then he opened the store, and uh, then he opened uh, later on, probably in the fifties, like that. Uh, the story goes: uh, Leo was seen, saw his son chasing an ice cream down a uh, ice cream truck or van, and uh, he saw, he saw his son Mike running down the street. You know, and, uh, you know, he's yelling at him and he, and, and he got an idea. Why don't he just uh, create a, an ice cream so he'd be very safe, so so his son can enjoy it, his family and people around the neighborhood. And um, he created the Dove Bar. That's one of its iconic uh, things. Anyway, so... Uh, the Dove Bar is still around. I haven't had one in a long time. Oh, they're so good. And uh, he opened the uh, ice cream, uh, you know, the candy store and the end serve ice cream. People remember the pointed white uh, cones or the cups like that. And the, you could smell it as you're walking by or when you enter in the store. And it just took off. It just uh, been very popular for many, many years, and then he expanded, and uh, he he opened another store, and um, he opened one in Elk Lawn. It was located at 50, 5172 West Ninety Fifth Street. That's like about uh, yeah, Fifty Second Street. I remember that. Uh, but that one closed uh, later. Uh, later on, it wasn't there very long. I mean, I don't know exactly how long it was there. Uh, for, according to some people, it was there was another location in Orland Park. Maybe it was. I'm not sure. I don't recall it. Uh, but people remember the candies. Uh, you look in the windows; they have the box chocolates, uh, and then they have like the you go in, you sit down, the old fashioned ice cream parlor. You would order uh, like a sundae, or have a dub bar, or like mm, so velvety smooth, <laughs> like that. And uh, in 1977, he handed over the family business to his son Mike, and uh, he took over, and then. Uh, got an idea he wanted to go national so uh he introduced the dub bar and now uh the mars uh the mars corporation you know that sells milky way snickers they uh they bought it and now uh, they market this the dub bar and also the candies well just like little pieces of candy it's still smooth it's delicious like the dub bars are excellent like that with the my favorite i hate to say it, my favorite dub bar is like chocolate ice cream and cover with chocolate i love that oh it's so good a lot of calories a lot of calories anyway so and then they had the uh, candy bars as well so it's still around it's 
messing around. The business, um, the business at um, the candies on Pulaski Road. I don't know when it closed exactly. Probably in the nineties, sometime. I'm not sure. Last I heard, uh, it was like a real estate office. Now, I uh, could be wrong. I haven't drove by it. Uh, I haven't drove both. I haven't drove that place by that place. Excuse me. I haven't drove by that place in a long time. So, um, you know, it's funny. One day I did, and I saw the the pl- uh, the place on the corner. I could still smell the the sweetness out of it. <laughs> so that's. Uh, once I posted this on Facebook and um, on X, the memories kept flooding for everybody. They remember it when they were kids. They rode on their bikes. They walked. And uh, they... So they it was a special place in their hearts like that. Uh, yeah, Leo Stephanos uh, passed away. Uh, the last I heard about his son, Mike, I think he's in Florida. Yeah, Naples, Florida. I think he is. I'm not sure. I don't think he lives here anymore. So I don't know if he caught wind of this one. I'm going to talk about it on my podcast. We'll see. Okay. So um, we'll see about that. So uh, when are, so if you're ever in the supermarket or you're in your 7-Eleven, you have a cream for a dub bar to help yourself. I do. I haven't had one in ages, but I'd love to have one now. (laughs) Ooh, that sounds good. Okay. Next up, I'm going to talk about the uh, Keyfax Night Owl uh, TV service. This is a very, this was a very interesting thing that happened. Okay. Um, It was a TV service. It was by Keyfax. It was some company. I never heard of it. This aired on WFLD-TV, Channel 32, in Chicago. It aired on midnight, uh, every night. And uh, I was, let's see, where was I? I was at Daily College when it first aired. Um, The funny thing is it only aired about a couple of years. Yeah, it wasn't on very long. So... um, this service provided news. Um, the funny thing is, it was all graphics and text. You know, they had the not, they had the owl, the night owl. He had big eyes. He looked like Sanguli. <laughs> I remember that. And uh, I used to watch this for a little time, like that. Uh, it, to tell you that, I was a little bored because uh, they just—it was like text. It's like reading a telegram, you know. You know what the funny thing is? This is like a a predecessor to texting, kind of like that. You know, when you read or by the internet, sort of like that. But you watch, but you saw it on your TV, and uh, it was very innovative. It really was, and unique, like that. So at late at night, um, I was in college. Uh, I was studying, you know, for exams or just reading, or I couldn't sleep. I either watched David Letterman, the the 1030 movie on Channel 9, or the reruns, um, or sometimes Johnny Carson, or the reruns on Channel 32. And then I uh, stumbled onto this, The Night Owl. And the news they provided was news, sports, weather, uh, news around the world, news uh, locally in Chicago, you know. And uh, for some reason, uh, just went off the air. You know, like that. I, I don't know. But it's, uh, but if you compare the text, you know, computer rated, that's computer generated, you know, you compare it today from there, it looks kind of, eh, not so great. <laughs> But you know something? It I didn't. I felt a little sleepy when I watched this, <laughs> so that's great because uh, you know it was like dull. And, and it played music, and it played uh, you know in the background they played like the latest uh, hits, you know, in the eighties, sometimes older, the oldies too. And uh, so, if if you want the news like twenty four hours a day, uh, the only um, 
cable channel, if you had cable with CNN, you know, and you had headline news at the time. So that's where your choices were. If you didn't have cable, you would watch this like that. And uh, it was just fun. It really was. It was a lot of fun to watch that. And uh, I think it was ahead of its time. It really was. You know, and uh, so that, 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 that was great. <laughs> like that. So, like I said, it just lasted about two years. I uh, ended some sometime in 1982. I don't know when exactly. And then they put they replaced it with reruns or a movie. Uh, I'm not sure. Like that. Of course, uh, that was like uh, around. We had on TV too. You know, pay pre. You know, pay TV time like that. Uh, let's see. So. Um, I guess they were trying to find ways uh, to compete, which they did with the news, like that, because the news were on five o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. <laughs> you know, not like today. Today is all day, every day, all day long. <laughs> That's how it is. Okay, right now I'm going to play a promo from 1981. This is uh, promo number two. From WFL TV Channel 32 in Chicago. It's uh, and uh, this is courtesy of Rick Klein from Fuzzy Fuzzy Memories TV the, from the Museum of Classic Chicago Television. Thank you, Rick. And uh, just sit back and relax and listen. And it's just a promo, and you can hear the music going doo, 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 like that. Okay. So uh, here it is, Night Owl Service from Channel 32 in Chicago. Thank you, everyone, and I'll be right back. This is the Key Facts Night Owl 30-second commercial, take one. Tonight, starting at midnight, it's Night Owl, an all-new information and entertainment service all night, every night on Channel 32, featuring up-to-the-minute news from around town and around the world, the latest racing results from all the area tracks, current sports scores of the Chicago teams and how they fared, late business news with market closings and information, continuously updated weather forecasts with maps and national readings, plus traffic and road information, airport and air traffic reports, what's happening in Chicago, your horoscope, and much more. It's Night Owl, all night, every night on Channel 32. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the promo for the Keyfax Night Owl TV service that aired on w WFLD TV, Channel 32 in Chicago. Uh, it's, it's so funny, like that. How times have changed since we get our, you know, when we get our uh, sources from, the, you know, you know, from the news like that. Okay. So uh, another great memory from the early 1980s <laughs> in Chicago. All right. That'll be all for this show. I'll do a recap of what I talked about. I talked about the Dove Candies shops in Chicago. Also, the Keyfax Night Owl TV service that aired on Channel 32 uh, in, in Chicago. Uh, this podcast will be broadcast. Uh, I mean, it will be, I'm sorry, this podcast will be published wherever podcasts are available Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts. Uh, it's no longer around. Uh, they, they stopped it. So, uh, so you have to choose other apps, uh, Amazon Music, Breaker, Overcast. Uh, also, it it's on my blog, vanishchicagoland.blog. Also, um, it's on my YouTube channel. Again, people ask me, where do I find your podcast? Where do I find your podcast? You can find it on YouTube. Do a search. Type in Van Chicago Land Stories Podcast or my name. Hit the subscribe button. You'll get the latest episode. Or if you like to listen to past episodes, help yourself. Same thing with the apps. Hit follow. You know, just tap that. And you're good to go. And you can listen to any device, desktop, tablet, laptop. 
streaming. <laughs> you listen to your car, your home, wherever you, whatever's uh, convenient for you. I got a couple of people, they send me emails. They said, uh, when I work out, I listen to you, which is nice. <laughs> so that, that's good. That keeps them going. <laughs> that's... Also be shared on my social media accounts, uh, Facebook, X, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, uh, what's that? Threads and uh, Blue Sky. I don't know if I left one you want. On oh, TikTok, there's to be the link, so you can click on the link and it'll take you right there to YouTube, and you can listen. Okay. So this is Pico Stanis, your host of Vanishing All In Stories, the podcast. Thank you for joining me. It looks like a beautiful day. Um, I will probably do another episode this weekend. I heard it's going to be gorgeous. Going to be gorgeous. And uh, I'm going to take it easy for a while. You know, I, I want to go back to walking. I miss walking, but I have a backache, you know, and I'm, I, I'm just walking slow, you know. Yeah, but I miss it because the weather is nice. You can get some fresh air. And hopefully next week with the radiation, it goes well. I will keep everyone posted on my social media accounts and see how that goes. Thank God it's just a week. Thank God. All right. So here is me saying bye-bye. And here's Ray Rayner with a little traveling music saying bye-bye-bye. Take, take care, someone. Like, I'm sorry. Take care, everyone, and so long. Excuse me. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye.